character, not just for the land itself, but for the nation and other aspects of daily global life culture. Between the rural and urban, central to the idea of nature's articulating in modern pop music is the contrast between this country and the city. These two boundaries is what has isolated, for the most part, an understanding of self mind which can be understood as response to the isolation from the world from the urban and the domains in which politics and other things occur when Cambodia was a protector. Cambodia is presented as a place in these songs as rural and Buddhist, full of tradition, but on the other hand, moving toward the direction of the modern nation, a current at an exponential rate in which different locales in Cambodia experience different forces. Hence, the seaplow man seeing the blouse of the young ladies sitting in front Hence, going around to the many provinces and seeing that there are provinces with names to themselves. A uh, quick anecdote my dad, in Bat Long, when he was younger, he heard of an old walk. He'd never seen it before. He stayed in Bat Long until when he was uh, able to come back in 2000. He actually visited Angle Wat for the very first time. This is how those geographies are okay. When When I said earlier, these songs opened up to indirect tourism. Those who became cosmopolitan in Cambodia at the time were able to travel to these places. He would have traveled to Bucket Ball, which is most of the about. He would have traveled to Bongat, from Gat. Right? Half of delicious crafts and everything else. Um, so, not just the land, but for the nation, the music, and the last one. I talked about Bucket Ball a little bit in his 100 years of domination as a force because of this. We have to understand that Cambodia has been territory for a long time, for about 100 years. So we do know that history. A little bit about that. To the treaties, the Paris treaties in 1903, I think, we turned the back to, uh, we turned the back to uh, Cambodia. Something very big. And uh, few actually know about this because they got the wall. But if you look at another transition, when you look at the history of the wall itself, it was an isolated place. Because it's was owned by the seams. Uh, I used the word seam because I wrote seams. It was high, that's another one. Contemporary, con contemporary Cambodia's construction of identity, right now, therefore strives for a balance between the idea of Cambodia's land, language, and literature, and its modern trajectory. But for the Cambodian Golden Age of Art, there has been a domain for the construction of that national identity. Advances in working towards, the, towards grants of working with nature as it goes hand in hand. And there is no need to sacrifice that political domain because of this apolitical. Features. The attempt to reconcile nature and technology, tradition and modernity, articulate in some of the modern music of that era. But it's not simply a national statement of the country's modernization. Rather, it is the way that music is made in the past as a simple notion of cultural ambassadors who define the nation and shape its policies through the representation of the political activities in the realm that we call art. Basically, this paragraph. Art at that time in the EU Institute, the Great Survey of Cultural Independence, was that it was all independence from architecture to painting to account to theater to music. They were independence because I was asked by uh, Terry, you know, when did uh, when did Cambodian music come to Cambodian traditional music? I think that was pre-existing music that became categorized. So yes, something else is not um, Now it's from art. I'm almost done with that. Art has to be understood in Cambodia is out of memory. That's how they teach you here. It's by memory. They teach you by memory and practice. I get yelled at for not using my brain because art is hard to memory. Now, not the memory that you think and know recently of the genocide and all that stuff. Because they were teaching that right now. Uh, but a much more deeper, deeper social memory. Collective memory, again, all of to which a select few artists who has chosen to be the social breakers to those who can enjoy. However, overlooking this is participating in the memory, meaning you can be a person who enjoys music, or you can be a person who understands music. <coughs> memory in this state of Cambodia is not transnational, it's not traumatic, and it's not biased. You consider what is traditional art in Even though other might say, like, you know, it is. 
But we must understand it's the same concept of the exact moment in which that art became formulated officially as part of the national heritage, 1953. The first of all, 1965, was the school of What we must understand is in philosophy is that for us to look at art as being transnational means Cambodian history as being transnational. So what people are using now in contemporary art it does not give birth to the art of Cambodia. It gives birth to an international heritage of art. Cambodian traditional art falls into line of traditional because of the process of cultivating an experience that's only located and experienced in Cambodia. So when you're a contemporary art, artist in Cambodia, you're a contemporary born artist, the only way it makes sense is because you were born here, you grew up here, you've seen everything. Not because you're a refugee and grew up in America or France or Australia and then you know, learn you know, art and then come back to Cambodia and now you're going to have your stuff and sit at home. No, 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 that's not Cambodian art. You have art, Cambodian art is it's through experience, through learning. It's not a workshop you take in Cambodian classical dance and you learn three or four poses and all of a sudden you make a contemporary art piece. No, 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 no. The monkey builds a bridge to block out with hot man looking for the Savannah uh, child. That's what he does goes to the whole process. Oh, I'm going to get you this. Um, so the art collective requires in its history the charismatic leadership. And in this case, the charismatic leadership leadership is Sino. Because Sino is the, the guy. Sino is the person that made Cambodian people who take note. And you can talk about it in a way in which that, well, he is the king. Right? Everybody looks toward the king at that time. That's why he's highly celebrated. That's why he has a monument at the independent monument, next to the monument. However, being charismatic is only one aspect because it falls into how art is today. Who are the people that are innovating traditional forms of art? It's hard to identify charismatic people when charisma has been sold out for the system of capitalism. However, given how he is just a hobby, when he was the gold standard, he is the gold standard. When he started making music, and he started opening the most which music he made, other people started making music too. But the problem that arises with Sino was this, though, when, they're, when other people's music became popular, he no longer became popular. And that was one of the issues that I struggled with, because for whatever, who came first, who created manifestation, history, art became popular in a sense because it's so often the people who were not from the king's were able to speak, or this were able to make music, were able to go out about and paint, make sculptures. Um, one, one aspect of my research is understand the economic system of foreign artists in the traditional foreign artists. A G, right? That's your expert. I took that Anki Jun, right? Private contract. But, in a sense, those economies are so blurry that you're still going to stay. Because a traditional foreign artist is always going to stay. Ruthless. You could talk the you know conservatory of you know artists that belong to the industry. Part of the state. So for you to be a traditional Cambodian artist, you have to be part of the state. It's political. And with this music at that time, it wasn't that political because the state was informed it or just formed recently. That's why it's so good. Okay, Bishop. So this collective memory, this process that only happens here in Cambodia. So Cambodian diasporas, people that have side music. Um, this is why I call it the xenophobic condition. Xenophobic, right? You don't like anybody else, just like your own people. It's not racist, it's not discriminatory, it's xenophobic. It's because such places as Cambodia, like any other place, is to safeguard one woman rights. And once you lose culture and arts, you don't have anything else. By being xenophobic, you are actually keeping yourself alive. It's not just safe for Else. That's why UNESCO designates things as cultural heritage. It gives people identities. For me, myself, I don't know, I like Cambodian classical dance. Too slow. Music not too cool. I like folk dance. I like, you know, peacock dance. I like, I love, I love all that stuff. You know? I love uh, rom com. Always fun with Cambodian leaders. You know, pretend I'm shooting the deal, give them money. And this is not exemplified by just current controversy with technical cultural relevance, but other ongoing and still hurtful memories like Vivian, Right and Roll, and Roll. Oh, those rich 
controversies. Safeguarding is in the simple terms, but to understand Cambodia as a modern state as a nation is just a recent phenomenon of And in Cambodia, you have to consider that even Sokhmai itself, when I told you, it's just a quite destructive term, was being referred when Sokhmai left how we love so much. Kambuji. Love that word, Kambuji. Think of Kambuji. For me, it's always Sokhmai. Sokhmai is mostly used by those who do not possess that exponential experience that people in Cambodia already have acquired and experienced. And I'd ask you to ask Cambodia to go on a holiday, right? many holidays, where you go, I'm going to go back home. It's my country. It's my song. Sukhmai becomes a thing of the transnational term, but Sukhmai itself denotes more of the larger idea at hand, which is the country of Khmer, not Cambodia, not Cambodia. We hear Sukhmai in these songs because Khmer at that time here they would seek out the country that is Kampuchea and turn it into Sokhmai. And not just one, one, one ratio, but for what I call a moment of cultural religion by the French, uh, not the French, the Russian philosopher, Lachman, who said that in this case, the allegiances are collided when the provinces meet the world. Culture collides and new things come up, new thinking. So all that stuff that was happening in the Grand Plain going to, you know, say, you know, uh, let's say, Bangalore. Wow, you guys are fighting for independence. And it didn't come by just the tourists, the Cambodian tourists within the country, it came to the radio waves. The changes that happened. Oh, I got 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> so we got to get the call. Um, I'll read this. Um, no, we had. They say no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not looking at that. You're looking at that. You're looking at that. I'm not looking at that. I was getting trouble with you thinking about it. I write too much. Okay, so, um, so what does that do? Okay. Music, in all universal sense, is a sensation. When you hear music, you actually feel music. That's how you hear it. Vibration hits your eardrums. Biological function makes you connect to an experience, whether it's language, right, or musicality. That's what music is. It's not sound. Say, well, what are your five senses? Hearing. Hearing is not a sense of my opinion. Hearing is one part of touch. So, uh, play that song here. This song is by the king himself. Make sure it's the one. The king wrote the song. I double checked the song itself because uh, I had a little bit of a problem. It says vacation in Gap. <laughs> Cambodian musical structure this time for the gramophone is that 
um, verse, instrumental, and then it's a repeat of the portion of the first verse, typically, right? because you only have two in 20 minutes. So match how church will be able to become.
Avalon, <laughs> Apollo. It signifies this technological modernity in Cambodia. You go find a record of Apollo record, did you see? The, the Apollo spacecraft. That's what Apollo type of technological modernity. No, we have some iPhone for that. Maybe I know some iPhone. Some oh, iPhone. Yeah. But think about that. Right? This is mm, 1961, right? By then, Joe Apollo. Young Jik Ma. In a sense, it's no different than now, right? Seven years into it. So, I spent two years looking at this word itself, trying to figure out. Does Apollo mean, say, you know, the Greek gods? Does it also say Greek mythology? So, my, my teacher told me, no, Apollo is not a word from the very that deals with knowledge. And it's used in the song to show these places of Cambodia as technological events. Last part. Now, um, that's actually it about um, destination. I mean, I've been running around this thing where I put examples like there is the landscape. And the lyrics are hard for those who don't really have a you know, uh, strong understanding of planning to see. But for those who do near the places, it's Pinopaki. It's a small bridge in Bang Hong, but it's a famous bridge in the song. So when you know it's Pinopaki, it's, no it's like from here to there. But for the imagining of people these of who hear the song, it's a really important bridge of love. In the song, he talks about his, the, the girl that he likes, his mom doesn't want him to ever see the daughter again because he's just a labor. And the bridge is the only bridge that knows the story. So he said, Nick Dunner can you know my story do not tell you. Um, I'm gonna end this right now with this one last one. This is and I started something without landscape. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna end something not about landscape, but it's just as important.
But uh, I guess that's it. That's my issue. Thank you. So, I think we, we still have time, and that, that's my, my trust that then the time that any one of us had. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, we still have about uh, 20, 25 minutes for discussions. If there are any questions or comments, then feel free to do it. Yeah. yeah. Holly, thank you very much. <laughs> um, we know each other 10 years into the six and four five set um, paper for my university also. So I, I have some comment and um, um, you said about your mom about how she let you go and go, and then the reason that you said that um, this is because of geography, this this point I disagree. Okay. Because in that time you said the era of Cambodian people about the culture, not culture of traveling. Except my mom, he, the culture of traveling doesn't exist. It's different uh, from my mom and me also. Even I have money, my mom to go to Bangkok and pay. I visa up everything. But she said, no, 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 I don't want to go and compared to the other world. So this is a different type. Uh, the second thing is um, about the uh, uh, transportation. At that time, I think it's difficult for uh, the people on the road, from the road, not too far, but uh, people difficult to access. And about economy, economy also. And again, the third thing is um, uh, the area of uh, maybe this happened, um, I think, uh, uh, pressure from the politic or uh, uh, civil war starting. So maybe uh, that, that's why uh, the thing is uh, different from now. She wanted to go this kind of test. Uh, the second thing is um, about um, the point you show a lot of in Baton Wall, and you say that the second song you say that the geography, the two guys who are. Uh, from different space and then they walk in at the COVID. This is quite uh, critical that uh, at the time of the era you should uh, search for more that the, the, the during Siru uh, era, the button box is one of the uh, COVID developments. So there's a focus before every button box. And Thailand, Thailand is not a COVID, it's a secret yeah. button box. Yeah? And then the, uh, the second thing is the author. A lot of author and a single come up from Baltimore. And also, example, Gu Chen. You know the guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah just by the way. Yeah. But the guy is emotional, writing author who uh, sings his song sing a lot. So that's, that's the point you should show uh, the people that uh, uh, that interested in Baltimore, not just like, oh, show that to me, no, no, no. It's not like that. And the third thing, you said that um, the fall down between the era, the uh, song uh, described about culture, about geography, but different now from uh, uh, like emotional song more. But you should show um, the song uh, the era, and you should uh, a few presentation with your new song, example, Sutil, you know, blah, 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 you know, just, it's, it's different, it's completely cool, but you should show a little one or two songs to uh, let the, the audience understand what your presentation is finding, okay? Um, the, uh, another one is, um, Okay. Um, yes. yeah. <laughs> um, just uh, I have to clear uh, my research is only on the global and nothing else. Can you that's the dates. What is the global body music is roughly around the time frame of the around the, the, the movement towards independence and post independence. So you have far in nineteen you want to count the no nineteen seventy five, right? Before the marriage. But before that, you've got to count for me, 1950s. I count the 1950s because that's when the radio becomes. So it's 20 years of. 20 years, 20 years of music, right? Um, in terms of growth, yes, right, I agree with you that travel is something at that time that I was saying. What I'm actually trying to say is that the roles are difficult. They are difficult now, and they're all difficult back then. But the thing is that these songs, they promote a visibility of these spaces. And that promotion, for those who, are, who have the car, which were the elites, right? They were able to go, right? They were the ones who were the cosmopolitan, I said, were the, were the, were the cosmopolitan, who had the means to get to these places. But when they went to these places, the contact with the individual in these provinces is that moment of realization. 
that we are not just one province. People don't, they're, you guys are from Well, you know, Biden is the most alive. You guys see each other. I want to go speak over here. Like that. And people in the province themselves, when they hear on the radio, the radio is free. They know already. Wow, we just went to that. It feels good. What I'm saying is this. The awareness that these songs addressed with the world at that time was important in understanding the concept of nation. Even though for many who could not travel, did not have the means to travel, that didn't mean they couldn't imagine it. They couldn't imagine being in World War at that time. And World War was only popular because the French chopped down some trees and found it right there in bushes. They were just moving there all the time. But the reimagining of it in the song was what made people like my dad think that. Oh, I wish I had a chance to go to World War, but I can't. Now it will flash to 2007 and we'll go to World War. So, okay. Uh, we're gonna, you're going to help me edit my dissertation when I help you edit your, your thesis, so. <laughs> More questions. When you Golden Age, you refer to this is a. Why did you decide to use Golden Age instead of Sankum? I think you are Sankum. No, 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 you don't use Sankum. You use I mean, is it you who choose? No, 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 no. This is a term uh, that many voters know as Golden Age. Right? Come with me. All my clients in the room, you agree? We know that's, that this was the age of arts and culture. And it was spearheaded by the king. The king initiated this. You know, he set the plans for the building. Got the move. You know, we made a king. Hired all this stuff. Sent people abroad. They came back with, with, with insights. And it sparked a new national heritage that coincided with the independence. So the golden age is not my term. No, it's, it's a term that unfortunately promoted this. Been promoted to right? older generations. Uh, but it was just one more yes, no, no. I For me, it's not clear how do you build your methodological corpus? How do you build your... Oh, uh, my, my methodology? I mean, I mean, talking about the, the song text, uh, it's 20 years of song text, so how do you discriminate which one you retain and which one you don't? What is the landscape of all the singers? I listen to everything. I listen to the Khmer Rouge songs. How? Can I, can I do that? How many, how, how many songs? I have... I'm starting. I... I uh, songs, uh, number of songs, number of songs, um, I, I, I lost count, I have, I just listen, and I, I don't scream, I listen to all of them, and these are listening to a lot of the Khmer Rouge songs that, that actually made, and actually a lot also post Khmer Rouge, 1990 songs from the, from the Ministry of uh, Memory as well, you know I don't do memory. Because I think it's realistic and it's impossible to say, okay, during, during this period of studying, we had these singers, I think it was and it would give a first picture, a first landscape, and after that, so among this, within this, I took and I said, it's these songs, because... And well, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't pick the songs. I ask my teacher for recommendations. My teacher knows the songs more than me. He knows who wrote the song, who sang the song. He knows the singer. And this is knowledge I don't have. I'm just a fun lawyer. In our case, I just look at things and I like it. My teacher is one who said, do you want to know a song about Cambodia? About Bada Ball? I'm listening to this song right here. He gave me that. I have a, so from that, my mythology is a selective data set, which is very familiar to Cambodians, because when they hear it, they know the songs right away. And that's where, that, to understand that, I mean, I can, I can really care less about people, you know, I can be like, oh, you know, why, why do you pick this, why do you pick that? Ah, just pick it, because the teacher told me to pick it. So, 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 so you're talking about the songs your teacher said, yeah, he, okay. my, my teacher, he, he's, he's a, he's a guru in Sato. He's a musician, he knows his song. Yeah, and, yeah. and I asked a guru, uh, Tara, you mean Tara, I asked him for help. He told me, listen to this song, listen to this music, go watch this. You know, come with me to uh, the TV station, watch it, think. Because you can teach anybody, but you can't teach you to think. And that's what he says, you pick, I pick these songs, you're just going to help you think. And when you're able to think, you can pick other songs. You know, you can pick any contract, unknown song, right, and make something nice, five page, ten page, make it out. But you can only pick the song that an uh, expert, an informant, who stuff. My mythology, transcription, uh, translation of the lyrics, song as, as recommended by experts, devoted musicians, traditional devoted musicians. 
uh, ethnography, sexual ethnography, go to the location of these songs and stuff, the geography, go to go to Spino, go to go to, go, go, go to Angkor Wat. Why did they come? Talk to the people there that's still there. Right? And then my last one is watch the work. Watch the movies. See how the movies play into the going traditional theater on film. See how those songs are not copying a Bollywood model, but it's actually Cambodian talking theater also. It's a lot more of this. This is just, you know, one of my requirements for CKS, and I don't mind. I'll be back to present more more free Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got lots of stuff around. But this is just a drop of history that, you know, people get a little bit like, didn't address history and this. And I always, I found this out as a presenter. Always be clear what you want to address. And I'm clear I was out to address geography, the landscape of the golden age of music. Um, actually, my question connects to a curious art regarding the methodology, because I was just wondering how you were selecting the songs as well, because as I asked, I know those songs are enlarged outside our pop pop region by the adult group who perhaps are familiar with the song. So they are actually already selected. The memory, so there might, there might be uh, um, other songs that, um, that are not belong to this group, which actually belong to the other group of the population, younger and older. So when you were saying that all of these are representing the concept of nature, it can be a bit when you are not actually having a whole idea of the whole song that has been produced in, in the period. And also to connect to what you just said about the golden age, I I think it depends on how you define art and and kata because um, perhaps you can also argue that um, during the chapter of the seven, the Khmerian art has.